Hello everyone. In this video, we'll discuss about the Proel Gerd. Proel governors. These are the modification of photo governors with the fly balls attached to the extension lens. So Proel governors, they also have the central load like the photo governors. And this central load it increases the speed of rotation. The Proel governors they are much better in function in comparison to other centrifugal gravity control governors because they are more sensitive, they work more accurately, and they work constantly without any fluctuations. Now, when we see the construction of Proel governors in this. Like the other gravity control centrifugal governors, the spindle is connected to the engine and the rotation speed increases or decreases depending upon the speed of the engine, which is dependent upon the load conditions. Now, working is whenever load decreases, speed increases. So, arms along with the central load is rises up and the fly balls, you can see they move outward. This condition. They move outward, which in turn reduces the fuel supply. It closes the throttle wall. Closes doesn't mean closes completely, but closes as per the accordance. It reduces the supply of the fuel and the speed is brought to the equilibrium condition. Vice versa, when load increases, speed decreases. The arms along with the arms, they lower down. The central load, it lowers down along with the sleeve. And the fly balls they move inward. This condition and throttle valve opens to increase the supply of the working fluid in order to maintain the mean speed. Now we'll do a derivation to find the speed of the royal governor and on what all factors does it depend. So here are certain terms. Or the terminology which we'll be using while doing the derivations for f we'll be using centrifugal force mass of the ball is small m force of friction by small f mass of the sleeve by capital m right now to calculate the height and the speed the formula remains the same whether you use it to calculate the height or the speed it remains same now again for derivation we have taken the left hand half part of the governor right so here we see the ball the fly ball is attached to a extension link right so there are few new terms that are being introduced to uh, denote the dimensions right angle theta is the angle between the upper arm and the vertical axis angle beta is the angle between the lower arm and the vertical axis and because they are the alternate angles this is also angle beta and because these are the corresponding angles this angle is theta this angle is also theta right and we have made a construction we have extended the upper arm and we have extended this vertically and they meet at a point r which we call as the instantaneous center right the height of the governor which is denoted by h this distance a the distance of the uh, extension link that means the center of mass of the fly ball the center of fly ball with this uh, axis with this horizontal of the spindle we denote by e now this radius usually the radius of rotation is r so in this case it is r dash right and the mass of the load which is capital mg plus minus f we have already discussed in earlier lectures that plus minus f means the frictional force because of the dead load and this value changes depending upon the motion of the load and the depending upon the motion of the load which means that when this dead load is moving upward the frictional force it acts downward so it becomes mg plus f when load is moving downward frictional force it is it acts upward in the upward direction so force becomes mg minus f and this we are taking by two because we are taking half part of the governor so the mass of the dead load also becomes the 
half right now we are taking moments about this point i which we are calling as the instantaneous center so this is the centrifugal force which is m r dash omega square r dash we are not taking r this is the radius of rotation in this case when the balls are extended outward that means this is the condition for load decrement and speed increment right so m r dash omega square and its vertical distance right its perpendicular distance is this e so into e is equal to mg now this mg is acting at some distance here right so what is this distance this distance is this total distance which is c plus r minus r dash so you get the value of this distance at which mg is acting so you get this right so c plus r minus r dash plus mg plus minus f by 2 and this is c plus b we have done a simple step we have taken this e on rhs now this is the condition when there is obliquity and this is quite a complicated situation so make to make it an easy uh, derivation what is being done for syllabus that is we consider r dash is equal to r that means we assume that ae is in vertical position right so r dash is equal to r so this factor r dash becomes r and from here it gets subtracted so equation becomes mg into c now the next step is we multiply a in numerator and denominator it is not going to affect the equation so this a of numerator it remains outside right and denominator it gets added to each term right now in this triangle if you see in this triangle 10 theta is what c upon a so c upon a is replaced by 10 theta and here also if you look in this triangle 10 beta is what b upon a this is a so b upon a is replaced by 10 beta and we already know that 10 beta upon 10 theta is k right now what we have done we have taken 10 theta common from the whole equation so from here it comes out common and from here also so we divide 10 beta by 10 theta which is a term k and mr omega square omega we know is 2 pi n upon 60 so we replace in the equation and okay so we replace in the equation we keep n square on one side take all the factors on the other side you place the values of 2 pi g 60 you calculate it and you multiply the whole equation by uh, numerator and denominator by g so the final result that we get is this n square is equal to 895 upon h into a upon e you have to understand what is e e is basically the distance of this extension link from the uh, this horizontal axis of this instantaneous center so whenever we are having cases when k is equal to 1 that is 10 beta upon 10 theta is 1 equation becomes this when force of friction is not acting equation becomes this the fr function of friction becomes zero and when k is one and friction is zero the equation becomes this thank you